Hey everybody, it's Luke over at Galaxy Tech Review, and today I've got a product from Nexigo. This is the Nexigo PJ40 native 1080p home theater projector. This has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. It even has an RJ45 Ethernet uh, connection to it, as well as a bunch of different extras that we're going to check out in just a moment. Okay, so this is everything that you get. Once you get it out of the box, you get the main unit itself. I'm gonna set that to the side, show you guys everything that comes in the box here. Uh, you do get a uh, PJ40 uh, user manual. It's in a bunch of different languages. Uh, and this is uh, something that you're gonna to wanna to hold on to just so that you can uh, you know, reference it if you need it. Uh, there are also some specifications in here for this particular projector, and I'm going to leave them up on screen here. So if I miss anything and you guys want to check it out, uh, you can come back to this point in the video and check them out for yourself. So hold on to this just in case you need it. Uh, it's got a lot of good information into it for reference. You also get a uh, three-prong to three-prong power cord here, and uh, this is a little bit of a beefier cord. The unit itself is a, uh, a little bit on the larger side, not the largest that I've tested, but a larger unit nonetheless. Now you get an AV, a legacy AV cord here for, uh, you know, legacy devices that'll use uh, red, white, and yellow inputs. You do get a cleaning cloth to clean your lens, and you do get an extra dust filter because there is a removable dust filter in this as well uh, that you can clean over time. Taking a look at the main unit itself, we do have uh, an IR port up front. Uh, we also have a very nice large lens here. This is a native 1080p projector. It will support playing back a 4K files as well, which we will test a little bit later in the video. You do see uh, some uh, venting on the sides here and a removable uh, dust uh, filter tray here uh, that one comes pre-installed. You get a second one as well, and you can clean that uh, as time goes on, uh, which is nice to see. It kind of just snaps into place there. Uh, and then we've got venting on the other side. Uh, on the back, we've got a ton of different ports. Uh, we do have two 10-watt speakers in this as well. Your power port at the bottom. You do have a LAN port, which is nice to have. If you don't want to hook this up to your Wi-Fi, it does support 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. You can use the Ethernet port. Two full USB ports, two full HDMI 2.0 O port with CEC, uh, a 3.5 millimeter output, and a uh, AV input as well. Now on the top, you're going to have your jog wheel here with your OK button. You're going to have your back, your home, and your power button. And at the top, we've got this little uh, cover, and that is going to be your focus ring. Uh, this does have keystone correction, automatic keystone correction, and 4D keystone correction as well. Now on the bottom, you've got four nice feet here, uh, and you do have a leveler in the middle uh, that you can use to level out the projector uh, itself. Now it doesn't have a tripod mount, and this is a bigger unit, so I wouldn't expect that, but if you're going to mount this in a different orientation, uh, you're going to be using something other than that anyway. And of course, last but not least, we do get a uh, universal remote here. Uh, it's kind of a slim remote, which is nice. Uh, it's got your volume up, volume down, home, back, your jog wheel, OK button, mute button, and of course, power button for you as well for ease of use. Uh, so you don't have to use the buttons on the top of the unit. Takes two AAA batteries that are not included. And that about does it for the unboxing of the Nexigo PJ40. Okay, so this is our main screen once you have this booted up. And let me tell you right off the bat that this is at 50% brightness. So that 600 ANSI lumens really shines through here. You can see we've got several different options. We've got our input source uh, where you can go in and you can choose AV, HDMI 1 or HDMI 2. So if you want to hook up something like a game console, you can easily switch back and forth. You do have a file manager for documents, video, music, or pictures, and it is capable of pay uh, playing back uh, each one of these formats. Uh, and we've got a more tab here as well, which we'll go into. This is where you can set up deal and A if you want to, your Bluetooth speaker, because it is Bluetooth enabled with Bluetooth 5.1. Uh, so if you don't get enough power out of the 20 watt speakers, uh, then you can hook up an external speaker uh, via Bluetooth if you would like to. 
course, we have MirrorCast for Android devices and iOS Cast. Um, so if you want to cast either an iOS or an Android device to this, you can do that, no problems. And then in settings, we've got plenty of different things to talk about here. It, it supports uh, wireless 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. I'm currently connected to my 5 gigahertz network and uh, it works out super fast. Uh, here is your Bluetooth settings. And this is a great place to set up uh, a external Bluetooth speakers or uh, Bluetooth headphones if you would like to. You can do it under the Bluetooth section here, no problems whatsoever. Uh, looking at picture, well, we've got our standard mode here, everything at 50. And again, brightness is currently at 50, but it's super bright. Uh, so you're not going to have any problems with using this during the daytime uh, or nighttime. Now we can go to uh, vivid or movie mode, and it will change some of the brightness and contrast. Or obviously, if we go to custom, we can change the brightness, contrast, saturation, and and hue uh, sharpness as well uh, under picture mode so we've got a full range of things that we can do uh, with this uh, and what we're going to leave this on for now is just standard for our testing now color temperature is going to be the same way if we go uh, back into uh, the menu here uh, we're going to take a look at color temperature you've got standard uh, a few other things that you can uh, switch there as well now you do have a fan control on this. The fan speed currently is at fan speed 8 out of 10. Uh, you can lower this fan speed, uh, but when you lower it uh, past a certain, you're going to lose a little bit of uh, brightness. And that is uh, you know, due to the fact that the fan is set at a curve where it will be able to maintain a certain amount of brightness. So I just like to leave it at 8. And when we do our testing, you'll hear uh, the 20 watt speakers and whether they will be able to handle the fan noise or not. Now under projection here, we're going to go be able to go in and we are going to be able to change uh, the whole setup uh, depending on how we have it mounted. So if I need to do this rear or ceiling front or ceiling rear, I can certainly do that and switch it right here in the projection mode menu. Going back, we are going to keep this in front and we are going to go into our auto keystone. That is what is on right now. But if you turn it off, you've got 4D keystone correction, horizontal and vertical. Uh, so you can do it this way on your own if you would like to. And you can adjust this any way that you would like. Uh, each corner uh, in 4D. So they've got this pretty well set up as you can see. Uh, so any surface that you're going to put this on, you can get the image uh, set up exactly how you need it. You do have zoom adjust here as well. So if you're projecting to a smaller area and you need to zoom in, you can digitally zoom this in as well. Uh, so you can do that if you're constrained for projection space. Display scale is going to be 16 by 9 or a 4 by 3. Most people are going to just keep this in 16 by 9 here. Uh, so that's what we're going to do for our testing as well. You can also reset all the defaults in projection mode. Uh, so you can uh, set it back to factory. Now here in update, we have online updates where it will go out and check. I have the latest version, uh, but you can do that. You also have an option uh, to a local update via USB as well. In system, we've got a couple different things to look at. Our uh, language here, we've got a bunch of different languages we can choose from. Time zone, manage keyboard. Now this is built on the Android system, so it's going to have an Android keyboard uh, by default, which is totally fine. Uh, you do have your electricity boost, power on source, uh, at keypad tone, and easy link CEC for HDMI. Uh, I just like to leave that on because CEC is pretty handy to have. In about, we can see our factory data reset. This is totally reset everything back to factory. We'll get our device model, MAC address, and system version here as well. So let's talk screen mirroring. I have an Android phone, so I'm going to use MirrorCast here to screen mirror. Let's go into MirrorCast. Uh, and using my Samsung S23 Ultra, I am going to just go into Smart View and select the PJ40 and Dash E293 from the list. 
uh, and it should connect up here uh, fairly quickly. And as you can see, it is connecting now, and we should get our screen here in just a few moments. Uh, and that's a pretty much about as easy as it's going to get here. Uh, as you can see, there's my phone. If I tilt it sideways, I've got it full screen here. Super fast and responsive. Uh, no problems whatsoever uh, with going through this on using Miracast uh, for your mobile device. And of course, if I want to go to uh, you know something like YouTube and view YouTube, I can totally do that. Here's a sample of YouTube being played via a Miracast. Hey everybody, it's Luke over at Galaxy Tech Review, and I used this Calming Companion for 30 days, and I want to give you my review of the CalmiGo Smart Calming Companion. What this is, it looks like an inhaler, but it's not. You breathe into it, and... So the fan level was at 8, and then I put the volume up just to 50%, and it pretty much took out most of the fan noise. So if you put the volume up a little bit more, you all race the fan noise there, even at level 8. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, hooking up like a game console or something like that where we're going to be able to, you know, play video games or something. What I usually do is I go into uh, my uh, USB drive that I have hooked up here, and you'll see it's just a 32 gigabyte drive here, uh, and it has a test file on it of me playing Fortnite in 4K, uh, so I'll show you some 4K playback here so that you can get an idea of how this handles 4K playback and what the color representation and, of course, volume is going to be like as well. So there you go. Again, the fan was set to 8 out of 10. Uh, the volume was at 50%. You can see that the color accuracy and brightness on this projector, in my opinion, is excellent. Uh, so playing video games on this is going to be awesome. Watching movies on this is also going to be really, really nice. And the 20 watt speakers will definitely drown out any fan noise that you're going to hear on this projector. Okay, so that's my review of the Nexigo PJ40 a native 1080p home theater projector. And I think Nexigo did a great job with the PJ40. It's a little bit on the larger side, but it's bright enough that you're going to be able to use this indoors or outdoors a day or night. And it's perfect for movies and for gaming. Definitely has some good extras like Bluetooth 5.1, a, a wired LAN port, a DLNA, uh, CEC enabled HDMI connectors, and more. Of course, being able to um, wirelessly mirror your phone or tablet, be it iOS or Android, is definitely a plus as well. This was Luke from Galaxy Tech Review. I hope you enjoyed my review, and I'll check you guys out on the next one.